This is part of a series of videos on LC3 programming. Specifically, I'm going to be looking at a data structure called a linked list. As I will be referring back to a previous video on another data structure on arrays, I would recommend that you first watch that um, along with an, a, an associated video which is on pointers. So let's first define what a linked list is. A linked list, the definition for us is an ordered collection of elements of the same data type. So you might wonder how is this different from an array? So the key step here is the ordering. The ordering in the case of a linked list, the ordering is implemented by explicit linkage. That is, when I have a linked list, and we will see the how a linked list is implemented in just a second, but we will have the linked list as be implemented using uh, the notion of the head of the list. So the head is a reference or a pointer, if you will, to the first element of my linked list. Each element is made up of what is its payload, that is its information content, and an explicit link. So the payload, the pay, by payload we mean if this uh, each node, let's say each node or element in our linked list has is a student record, then maybe it has attributes like a name and a score and so on. So that's the information content of it. But there's an explicit link that tells us if this is the first record, then this first record is going to point to a second record. And the linkage is established through this explicit pointer that we have or reference that we have. So the second node in turn is going to point to a third node, to a third node and a fourth node and a fifth node and so on. If our linked list, let's say, had four elements in it, then the linkage would look something like this. This one explicitly links to that this one explicitly links to that and when we reach the end of our list and there's nothing to point to this one doesn't point to anything so we'll null terminate it or put a zero there so that's our null termination of our linked list now to kind of give you a contrast between this and what you know as an array in an array, the ordering is explicit. So for example, in an array, when I declare an array, I would put my nodes one after the other. That's my first node, my second node, my third node, and fourth node. So for example, if in this simple example, let's say I had a scenario where this was the first student with, um, with initials, with initials A, Z, and a score of let's say 85 then this will be a z with a score of 85 but the second student if this this is my second student let's say with a score with the name of by and a score of let's say uh, 94 then by 94 is right here and the ordering is in the case of an array the ordering in the case of an array the ordering is implemented by implemented implicitly by positioning them. By position. That is, they're contiguous in memory whereas a linked list doesn't have to be contiguous now the purpose of this video is not to 
uh, not to go about telling you what the advantages of one versus the other are, but I really want to show you that they're not that different in terms of of how you can uh, how can you can declare them, how you can use them. Um, so we'll take an example of a simple linked list, how we can declare it in uh, in LC3. So here is a linked list of students. So let's take a declaration, example of a declaration. And so we're going to declare an array. Um, we're going to declare a linked list. And here is our linked list. Um, and we're saying that the head is stored at memory location um, memory location 4500 and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my first node which is this guy I'm just gonna move it to somewhere so that you can see the point of the fact that they don't have to be contiguous I'm doing this declaration in one file so that I don't have to to create multiple files but uh, visually you can you can also imagine them looking something like this the first node was that the second node is somewhere here let's say in memory somewhere else in memory and the third node let's grab this third node from here which is uh, sitting right here right now so I'm gonna move this guy here and now they could be anywhere in memory I'm just giving them labels so that I can easily refer to them so my first node is this is the head is just, which is telling you where the first element is. This is telling you what the second element is. This is telling you where the third element is. The third element is pointing to the fourth element and the fourth element is pointing to the fifth element and the fifth element is a null. So, so this is how we can declare an array in LC3 and we can either put them all in one file or these can each be in a separate file. But if you put them in separate file, you'll have to remember the addresses and write explicitly write the addresses in each of these locations as opposed to just using labels. The advantage of putting them all in one file is that I can the labels can be shared and they can be easily used rather than having to remember addresses. So let's try to understand how a linked list can be traversed. By taking a simple problem. The problem I'm going to take is a problem that we've seen before called find max. Uh, we given a linked list of student records find the student with highest score and print her name in our case that's just the initials So, so we'll solve this problem um, by first visualizing this in terms of a flowchart. So the flowchart, let's look at the flowchart. This is our uh, idea of how we're going to solve this problem. So here's our flowchart. I'm going to make it a little smaller. It's too small. There's our flowchart. And the idea behind our flowchart is pretty straightforward. We will first get the first uh, element for address of the first element and then we will uh, keep keep track of what the max element so far is initially this will be a zero because we don't have any elements so far and as soon as we check if the pointer the reference is a zero if you find that the reference is zero then we get out if the rest if the otherwise we keep searching for it so searching for the max so in each iteration here which is my loop I will see whether I have a new maximum if I have a new maximum then I'm gonna uh, make a note of where it is and then when I when I'm done with that I'm gonna move to the next element so moving to the next element is a matter of taking 
your current node if your node r not let's say is pointing to your current node right now address then to go to the next element the next element will be in our case because our records are made up of a of a name which is three character three three uh, spaces and our score which is one space so this offset to this one will be at an offset of four so we will find the link there and we will take this link and r naught will now be set to to go to the next item we will set r naught to be equal to the memory contents of r naught plus whatever that offset is and this can easily be done using an ldr instruction so ldr r naught r naught pound 4 will do this for us so let's actually look at the code now and see how this translation works. So I'm going to repeat my my flowchart here and I'm going to write the code right next to it. So, so let's go through the motions of this. We have our student list head. Let's say that our, uh, our head is at 4500. So this LDI operation will get me. So we have our head which is student list head head is pointing to which is at x4500 it is pointing to it has a it's holding an address of it is holding the address of the first node so i'm going to get the address of the first node by doing an ldi operation on the student list head so i get r naught to hold the address at this point the rest of the code is just following this the flow chart literally so we we initialized our r1 to 0 here here we are setting our max to be equal to 0 and in fact we want the max to be minus 1 so these two steps process will do that we're seeing if there's any more students how do i check if r0 is 0 i'm just doing a dummy operation of taking r0 and adding 0 to it and then I'm going to see if it is zero. If it is zero, then we are done looking. We're going to come here. This is where my done looking is. So I'm going to come here. In fact, we can even make associations between the block here and the block here. So this entire initialization block is right here. This comparison check is right here. This is this guy. This is our loading of the score. This is our comparison. So this entire thing here from here to here is this block right here. And then once we find that it is not higher, we will jump, we'll skip. So this is our step where we are doing our not higher, which is this guy and unconditionally branching back to, to my original point which says more students but if i have a new maximum then i'm updating it so this block here is this block right here and then when i'm done done looking if i've come to the end if i if i finish looking then i know who the maximum is and r naught is holding that address right now so i'm gonna take r naught and because of the way we set up our our code r naught is already pointing to the address of the so because remember our nodes have a name at the beginning and a, and a score so r naught is already pointing to that address so all i need to do is transfer uh, sorry r1 is already pointing to that address i need to move it to that because this is put as and put as expects that your input is given in r naught r naught holds the address of the string that we want to print To kind of convince you that the difference between arrays and um, and linked lists is not that significant when you look at the code. Uh, here is just for reference our code for a array implementation. This is an array implementation where we have we solve the same array uh, find max problem. And here is our our linked list implementation. 
This is our linked list implementation. And you will see that practically the code is identical except for a few lines of, of code. First off, our LD here is real is now an LDI because we're getting not to this this array location, but we have the head, and from the head we have to go to the actual array. So that's why we used an LDI. And here we are we are finding our 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 null is uh, we we find out the name names initial name is has a uh, name is empty tells us that we have a end of our list but here the fact that we are pointing to a null null node is our empty list so that instruction is different the other thing is when we navigate and we move from one record to another record here we simply do an add r0 r0 r4 because remember order is implicit here whereas order for us is explicit in the case of linked list so i have to explicitly load that address so order is explicit so i have to load it from that particular location other than that the codes code is almost identical